Hi everyone, welcome to the ETEL blog special panel that we are doing here for you today in the exhibit hall, booth 811. If you are standing around, welcome. If you're somewhere else in the exhibit hall, uh, hi, hope you're having fun here at ETEL. So I'm here today with two very special guests. I have Mark Simmons from Design Within Reach, and I have Mark DeRitter from Columbia Sportswear. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks Thank you for us. being here. Yeah. So we are today going to talk about a couple of business matters, but we also want to kind of change it up a little bit and have some fun because I know you guys are listening to a lot of discussions, a lot of panels, a lot of presentations, and we don't want to overload you too much. So I wanted to start off just by asking the two of you guys, what do you find to be the most challenging aspect of working in your jobs in marketing today? And then also, what is the most rewarding part of working in marketing? Either Mark, start off. <laughs> uh, I, was, I would say the most challenging right now is certainly finding the right people, the right talent, the right skill set, um, because it is constantly changing. And uh, I think the theme you've heard over and over this week has been uh, innovation and change. Um, so finding the right people isn't something that they've done in the past. It's finding the right person who's going to fit on your team, um, who's going to be able to, to think of new opportunities and, and drive new projects. Um, and it's not necessarily an easy thing to find, no matter where you are in the country. I think, um, and I think that's the biggest challenge because you can't. There's no. There's no blueprint right now for what the what the world's going to look like. Right. You know, that's ironic you mentioned that because. Um, I, I had a different challenge, and I'll address that in a second, but uh, a good you know, colleague source of mine that's in the recruiting side was uh, researching through LinkedIn, which we all know is pretty much a good indicator of you know, skill sets. And for the last three or four years, he's been looking at LinkedIn and monitoring e-commerce as a skill set. Mm -hmm. And we understand that you know, industry is you know, conservatively growing at 8 to 10 percent. Um, you know, e-commerce overall, and he has been looking at e-commerce as a skill set and seeing that the skill set has increased only less than 1%. So if you look at the delta between 8 to 10% of, you know, the growth versus 1%, which obviously, you know, the delta doesn't necessarily dictate, you know, you need to grow as aggressively, but it's still a big delta. So to your point, you know, the skills out there are a huge challenge. Um, and finding the commitment. I mean, the other challenge is, of course, e-commerce is a shop, you know, a store that's online 24-7. You know, it comes with the commitment of understanding that, you know, the holiday, you know, certain times of the year, you know, you're working and you're committed, you know, aggressively. Um, and, you know, to find some individuals out there that are willing to do that, it, it can be a challenge. What about rewards? What is the most rewarding part of your job? Uh, for me, it's it's the fact that it's always going to be different, and the reward is when you get something right um, after you've been struggling to find the, the right answer. And again, doesn't always happen, um, but the fact that you, you're going to your job is going to be different from every six months from what you're doing, what you're focusing on. I find it very rewarding to to have that constant challenge um, of figuring out the next cool thing um, and being able to to sometimes see the rewards and the fruits of those labors. Um, it, it's 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 definitely different yeah. th this year than it was last year on what the projects are, what the priority are, is, and then you get to learn a whole new skill, a whole new area of expertise. Yeah, I, that's definitely also on the same we rewarded for me, but um, furthermore, it's, you know, as opposed to where some people look at, you know, seasonality and, and the aggressiveness of holiday as, you know, a negative, I, I love it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's what I consider the Super Bowl of retail. And I'm a competitor, you know, I play a lot of sports and I want to compete. Um, so this is where the industry fits my personality. Right. Um, I'm sure you're the same way and, and so on and a lot of people in this audience are. Right. Um, you know, you want to compete. And from November to the end of December, it's the Super Bowl. Right. And you, the beautiful thing is you also quickly understand, are you winning or losing? You can understand that daily, you know, by the hour. Um, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, you know, everyone's on hand, understanding is, you know, where's the data, where, where are we at? Um, and that's also a beautiful thing. It's not like, you know, traditional marketing where you understand like two weeks later, oh yeah, we had a great Cyber Monday. You literally know 
during Cyber Monday, right. are you having a good Cyber Monday? Right. Right. Yeah, so. it's instant rewards, instant gratification. So I wanted to talk about some of the trends that are going on in the industry and some big stories that have kind of come out lately that are really kind of consumer um, interest stories but are so directly impacting us as e-commerce businesses. Um, I know we're not necessarily in the publishing business, but I, I don't think any of us have ignored the fact that the Washington Post was just bought by Amazon CEO. I wanted to kind of ask you guys, what do you think this says about our industry um, when someone like Amazon is literally buying up such an iconic product that maybe some people think is, is representative of a, a dying industry? Uh, can I get your comments on that? Uh, well, the, I think the, f the first part about that is it definitely validates the idea um, that content is still valuable uh, right. and it's just trying to figure out the business model and mechanics around that, um, that it's under siege and under uh, attack, um, but the underlying value of content, great news, is still something ex is extremely important to people. Um, and I think the unique thing that I keep looking at for that deal was that he did it personally. Uh, I think we all know that he'll have a business purpose for it and it'll have a lot to do with Amazon, um, but I think the idea that he can acquire it work on it a little bit under it without having the glare or the, the, the microscope of Amazon's reporting on it um, and having to figure out what they have to do in what time and then and communicate it. I don't, I think that it's going to be an interesting slower evolution because it is private, part of his private portfolio versus an right. Amazon portfolio. And it's a drop in the bucket, he's got time, he knows that content was probably undervalued and yeah. it's a great, I think a great acquisition. I think it does talk it does speak to the, uh, this idea that commerce and content are always going to be linked. Right. And while it's a little bit broken because as commerce companies we're creating a lot of content um, and the content companies are trying to figure out how to monetize in additional ways, but I don't, I don't think he has to have that answer right away or he are, may already know the answer, but uh, we right. may not see it for a little while and right. how it's all going to work right. out. Mark, do you have anything to add? Or? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Content <laughs> is king and we understand that in e-commerce. I mean, you know. Yeah how can you attribute some more value or interesting facts around a product. So there is going to be some synergies, I believe, even though it is separate from his Amazon, um, you know, large venture. Uh, I think there's going to be definitely some synergy. So yeah. what does, you know, Washington have to say or a news um, agency have to say about certain products and so on? Um, yeah. You know, you still want to keep an unbiased approach. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of content, and that's probably the reason why he purchased the, right. the, the company. And, and furthermore, I think it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Um, he's going to instill a new purpose. You know, it's no longer a, you know, put out a news product. It's, you know, I think he's going to instill, like, you can become bigger and better, uh, but it's going to take a lot of hard work. And right. if anyone has worked for, you know, Jeff Bezos, it's, you know, he demands a lot. Right. Um, and right. I don't know that factually. I've never worked for him. Right, but right. From everything I've seen and read, um, he's, a, he's a driver. Um, yeah. and, and maybe that helps. And Amazon's been, I mean, they're heavily in the content business now. I mean, right. they with Amazon Prime, I mean, they, they have a lot of media assets already. So it's a, probably a very natural, easy outgrowth for distribution and also tying into their other products whenever they're ready right, to do right. so. Another overarching issue that kind of seems to be looming in the clouds and that we're talking a little bit about but not fully is just the idea of um, taxes with Amazon. How do you think that's going to affect retailers uh, in terms of you know all the new tax laws that are going to be put in place? Well, I personally, I, you know, I, I, I'm a believer that it's a little unfair for e-commerce pure play to not be taxing when local retailers are having to do that, right. um, and we are uh, we have uh, we have taxation in, in all the states where we have stores, right. um, which is uh, about 20 states. So we've been dealing with the issue for a while um, and competing against online only, and it it does it does impact. We have customers who see a slightly different tax um, whether they buy it just outside of a city versus in our store in the city. Right. So there's all these little nuances where it's confusing for the cons consumer. Um, while everyone loves a deal, I don't think everyone loves the idea of having to work around certain things. So I think a, a fair, equal playing field is good for everybody, um, and especially local, smaller retailers. Right, so, right. Mark? Yeah, I mean, I think the days of no tax are, you know, yeah. short and soon to change. Um, Amazon even recognizes that, not to keep yeah. bringing them up, but, um, you know, they've started, you know, they realize if they want to do um, day 
day within fulfillment or same day fulfillment um, that they need to have distribution houses all over right. the country. Right. Um, so they're already working with a lot of states around, you right. know, if we place a distribution house such as in New Jersey, you know, uh, what is our tax rate, you know, and, and at the end of the day, though, it's, it's, it's definitely going to come from the federal government around, you know, yeah. eventually yeah. setting a tax. So, right. um, you know, until that time, I mean, people are going to try to take advantage of what they sure. can. Of course. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. Mark, <laughs> Mark and Mark, Columbia Sportswear, I have to ask, what's your favorite place to travel? Uh, Italy. 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 Yeah. I mean, just the diversity, um, similar to the Northwest, and, you know, you can be in a um, great kind of oceanside um, scene, and then quickly within an hour, um, you can be in the mountains. Right. Um, and the same with Italy. I mean, you can go to Venice and, you know, have a great ocean vista and, and have great vino or wine and can't argue you know, with that and uh, same with the, you know Oregon and then of course you know a few hours away you can go up to the the mountains it's gorgeous Mark I, I'm gonna go with the corporate answer slightly which is San Sebastian Spain Ooh, okay. which is a beautiful wonderful place um, and also where one of our family-owned Spanish designers and manufacturers has their headquarters and um, they're great hosts as well. So wonderful, wonderful. Come on down, let's go. <laughs> All right, what, here's another one. What are you guys reading right now or what have you read recently that was fascinating and exciting, whether it was a book, magazine article, anything? Uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty annoying and uh, folks on my team will can agree with that. Uh, I'm always giving out books. Um, so. Uh, uh, thinking Fast and Slow was really good, interesting, um, and then novel just that I just read by John Banville, um, A Sense of Ending was amazing, and I highly recommend it. So I, you know, I don't read books, uh, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, um, I rarely do. Yeah, myself. please, please. Uh, Who has time anymore, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, so part of that is again just the fast-paced um, lifestyle that goes with my work. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very much an article, like anything less yeah. than a page or two, um, you know, is after that, I'm, I'm like, I lose interest. Um, that's not to say that books are, you know, <laughs> they're important. Of uh, course. But, um, you what I'm, pals, you need to go to pals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything recently is, is typically, a, you know, the most recent article on, you know, um, on CNN or, right. or, or on, the know, blog, on the or Etel blog. On the Etel blog. There you go. There you go. All right. Let's let's skip to another medium. Movies or TV? What's the best thing on right now, or the best thing you've seen? So this is where you could be reading books. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. Um, come on. I mean, you can't go wrong with Breaking Bad. I mean, just started. It's the second time I've last, gotten that answer. I yeah, love it. Yeah. Last, you know, last Sunday, last, you know, eight episodes. Um, that's that's great TV. Uh, I don't watch either, so oh Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds games I watch a lot. All right, all right. We can, I, that was going to be my next question, sports yeah. teams. Cincinnati Reds, who are sadly in third place and need to figure it out, So, because uh -oh. I have my World Series winning ticket in my pocket. Oh, boy. Uh, Seattle native, can't go wrong with the Seahawks. Uh, you know, they got a lot of challenges, but definitely a big, challenging team out there for the Super Bowl. Favorite cuisine? Burritos. Ooh. San Francisco burritos. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Good one. It's a mix between sushi and, and Mexican. So, Everybody loves Mexican. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, but everyone knows sushi too. So <laughs> it, it kind of goes back to, like, you know, love the seafood side, but um, also love. Is there a, re a restaurant concept there, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Double, double. And what did you want to be when you grew up? Supreme Court Justice. I didn't make it. Wow, You're doing that's, all right. That's that's aggressive. <laughs> well, no, it um, didn't work. <laughs> uh, you know, I I always envisioned when I was younger as you know being more of a FBI kind of secret agent. Um, Ooh. I tried a little bit. I was in the military for a while, hey. so um, it just didn't work out. But you know, I, I the thing that always fascinated me with around that is is just analytics and numbers. Yeah. Um, I saw that when I was even well, younger. Um, so this industry, e-commerce, has definitely allowed for that. Seems like both of you ended up in a pretty good place. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank it's you. been really fun, and I hope all of you out there have enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. And everybody out there right now, if you are in the exhibit hall, head over to the Breakfast at Tiffany's table because we're about to do the drawing. Thank you so much.